fifteen, and we'll um, um, open up this uh, select board meeting, the town of Rochester, <coughs> on January tenth, and I'll um, confirm that we posted the agenda in three places, and I saw it on the website and emailed to interested parties, so we can. Um, move ahead with this meeting. We'll have uh, opportunities for public comment after we um, deal with the business on the agenda and limit the commentary to five minutes per issue. So uh, start off with the minutes from the December 27th meeting. Does anyone have any modifications or changes with those? No. Nope. I did not. You did not? All right. So I'd move to approve the minutes as presented for the Second. December. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay, we got that. And we have, um, and the first item on the new business is we have some of the library trustees here to discuss concerns that they have. So take it away. Hi, everyone. Thank Hi. you for having us tonight. Yes. I'm Kelly Kelly. I'm chair of the um, board of trustees. And just a couple of things that we wanted to address tonight, if we could. Um, there are some issues at the library as far as uh, building maintenance. And so we were, as trustees, we were just wondering what is our role in getting things done as far as the building reserve fund is concerned and how does that work? Well, there's, um, it's interesting, we're looking through um, minutes from a special town meeting on June 26 that was addressing um, some of the issues with the library and it, it definitely um, authorized the public library board to establish and manage a reserve account for restoration and preservation of the library building so that was that was new I know we've been leaning on the the main well <laughs> the town reserve fund for building maintenance and it would definitely have it's we there's not enough money to go around, put it that way. So it's definitely on, you know, it's on our radar, the, the issues that come up and trying to, you know, get the library painted. And the, I guess a bigger issue now is the, the water penetration through the siding, which is probably contributing to the lack of holding paint. Um, but the process of getting in line for that is, I mean, well, you do it quite well by showing up at the meetings and, and reminding us to do that um, basically we're we're um, trying to attend to the put the biggest fires out first you know um, I don't know do you guys have any comments the document we're referring to is June 26 2006 yes that was a special town meeting in June and it's puts the building as a municipal library right but that's the the building itself is under the charge of the trustees so in the past they've always gone to the voters for money so as far as authoring use of the of the town funds that we have in reserve would have to go through the voters any money we put in there as far as I can tell so what I've read in the past and what has happened in the past when they've done renovations on the property has been all through the voters. We bonded it back in 13, I think, to do the work on the inside, and we're still paying on that bond at a, roughly about 13000 a year. So I would suggest to the trustees, at least as I look at this, that they seek grants and if there's a matching system on that to uh, come to the town to support the matching part of that grant and to look for for a grant writer to get money to fix the building and that's the way I think I would approach that because we're the town's really not going to have any money to do that with I don't foresee that being a, an issue that we're going to have the, the library would be on the low part of the scale as far as budgetary concerns are you know it's just really gonna happen like that so that that would be my suggestion my understanding correct me if i'm wrong because this happened i think before i came on the board was that there used to be a library reserve fund mm -hmm. but then it got scooped up by the town reserve fund building reserve fund is that true uh i don't believe so this 
Go I, ahead. I don't know about that being scooped up by the town reserve fund. Because Maybe I misunderstood a, something yeah. I heard in the past then. Yep. Um, we right. also we have Jeanette with her hand up. Okay, Jeanette, you want to <laughs> speak up? Well, yes. Um, back in 2006, that special town meeting did indeed create the library building reserve fund. It was specified, however, in that article that it would be funded by the proceeds of our 2005-06 annual appeal letter. Mm -hmm. um, that money has been spent. Um, and then a few years ago, the town combined the library building reserve fund into the other town building reserve funds. So any funds that were in there you know, were combined into one. So we, in effect, lost our separate building reserve fund. Now, I mean, if the select board would like to, you know, re-authorize um, that old library building reserve fund into a separate one, um, I don't know if that would, there would be objections to that, but clearly there would have to be an article to fund that separate library re building reserve fund, you know, their four town meeting and adequate funds uh, put into there to take care of the building. Or, I or, do not know of any grant um, that are out there available for um, this town building. Um, what, what came of the investigations of the, um, the folks that you were meeting with about the preservation of historic buildings that was um, well I followed scene. up with her and yeah. she said this was not uh, would not be a funded project that it was inappropriate for the funds that they had available okay. so there are grants out there to explore though I don't know if there's there's no grants that would be appropriate for that that building but the, I guess the, well, um, the if we were to Going back to the topic of the library having its own reserve fund, this initially it was funded by the um, the fundraiser, by the library itself, not a at least the one in the 2006. That was not a separate article of money from the town. That was from the library's um, capital. Yes, and sub capital subsequent to that, there was separate articles to fund the library building reserve account. All right. So, what are you what are you pointing at just, there, Frank? Just this is a what the select board letter said here about when they did the renovation and thanking the people that donated to the community, added voter approval for the bond issue when they regarding the the, the, bond, the major bond for the big project. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's there's no question that there's money needed for the library building, for this building, for the town garage. The, um, and I guess the, the basic question that we started with was, how do you get in line for the town building reserve funds? Which basically the the amount of money that's in there is 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 really minimal. Yeah, it's it's, it's for patches. Right. You know, I mean, we did. Um, deal with the chimney on this building, which was really a liability because that was about ready to start peeling bricks off and dumping on people's heads. So really, the um, for did did that an investigation of the the siding on the library has that gone any farther in terms of determining what um, what a proposed fix would be for that, or is that that taken that step yet? Not yet. Not I'm yet. still yeah. waiting to hear back from Jim uh, about mm -hmm. whether he would undertake that project. Yeah. Well, I, then the first step, I believe, was just to open it up enough to get an idea of what that project would, would actually mean to see, see right. what's in there. That's yeah. what I'm waiting to hear back okay. from Jim, whether yeah. he would do that evaluation. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, did he have a, a price tag on that? I'm still waiting to hear back whether hear he'd take it on and at what cost. Right. Um, and I'll get back with you when yeah. I hear that. Yeah. But 
I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a concern now. The, um, I think another question that you had was um, why you were asked to go to a petition to increase the appropriation for the library this year, and that's basically the process we take that if there's an increase in an appropriation, it goes to a petition. And it's I don't see it as a real hardship back a couple years ago when the library was folded into the main budget and the select board had control of the budget and we chose to modify it a little bit to try and balance the budget, then the library created a petition at that point to get that money back that, that we had taken out of the budget. So it's it's not a unfamiliar process to to run a petition to, to I guess our, our question money. was that it, um, the thing that Julie sent me, which I appreciate her sending me, is said that we were um, it was for outside social service organizations. That was how it was explained that um, those people would need a petition to get an article, and we're not an outside social service organization, so I don't think that is the actual answer to the question of why do we have to do the petition. Is that the answer to the question, is because the appropriation was more than it was last year? Yeah. If we had level funded, we wouldn't have had to do a petition? Correct. Okay. Correct. Which I think is what happened last year, right? We have level funded for the last three years. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, and then there was no petition okay. involved for right. that, yeah. So. Um, yeah, because this was just kind of um, sprung on us later in the game. We, mm -hmm. I, we were able to do it, I'm sure, right, Jeanette? There were enough signatures yes. to get the yeah. petition yeah. all was, taken yeah. care of. It shouldn't be that, so. that hard. Okay. I guess no. it, did, it was um, not, I guess, not knowing what the ask was from the library until that's when it triggered that, that okay. request for the petition. What yeah, was, we, go ahead. Yeah. What was the purpose of that? Is there a purpose to it? The purpose of it is just to, um, for transparency and awareness so people, you know, have, um, you know, just to, to show support. I but mean, isn't the amount that we ask for in the article, I mean, that's, people are going to say, they're, they're going to vote yes or no. I mean, that's, they, they can look back in their last report and see that the amount has gone up. Right. And we even are saying that in our, um, you know, in our blurb that we're putting in the yeah. town report yeah. this year. Yeah. Right. So, but if that's something that we know that we'll have to do, every, if, if, if and when, mm -hmm. again, we raise the budget, We'll have to do a petition. Is that a given? The way that the that's structured now, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, may I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. sure. Yep. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Am um, I understanding correctly that that this year's ballot will include a, a separate uh, funding uh, request from the library, or is that going to be included? Did I misunderstand? Uh, no, it's the. Um, the library, the the request of the it's not a separate one. It's just a a change in what they're asking from last year. Okay, but it'll be included. So then, but that request will be included in the overall request of for um, for the buildings and not a separate item. It's one request. Martha. It's, it's, it's just, just one our request. budget yeah. for the year. Yeah. One request for the town, not for the library specifically? No, there is a separate article for the library. We separated okay. out a couple years ago just to um, just to have more clarity, and so it wasn't just swept along with everything else. Okay, and, and okay. Actually, I thought so, but yeah, I got yeah. confused. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. So yeah. there will be a separate item for the request from the library on town meeting, the town yeah. meeting. Um, yes. Heaven. Okay, thank you. As as yes. That's the way it's been for the last several years. Yeah, last few Right, last few exactly. Years. That's what I yeah. thought. I did. I was yeah. confused. It sounded almost like it was changing. I'm yeah. sorry. Which I, I think actually does end up in, in generating um, some um, recognition and support for the library as opposed to it just right. being swept along with everything else. Right. That's, um, you know, so. In the big, in yeah. the big budget. Yeah. Okay, um, and then one final thing, please. Yep. Um, the two parking spaces in front of the library, can that please be plowed out by the town crew? Um, it seems like they, they plow in front of the Federated Church and along you know that west side of Route 100. Um, it's just kind of a little too much for a shoveler to be doing just the part, yep. you know, down by the road, not our, our walkway or anything. We, right. we're, we have somebody doing that. But. Just not the state? Uh, no, they wouldn't plow up that far. 
Well, uh, Patty, the, the problem is the state. The state plow comes by and completely fills those two parking spaces mm -hmm. with a wall of snow, which is too much snow for one guy with a shovel to then remove. Right. That when the town plow comes through town moving other piles of snow out of parking spaces, they generally do the ones, for example, like Kelly said, in front of the Federated Church, but they don't come down and clear the ones in front of the town library. And we're asking for the select board to, to remind the town road crew that they need to make sure those two parking spaces are cleared of the snow left by the state plow. Who, who plows the Pierce Hall? Harvey's, I think. Harvey's too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do they put that snow? Where does they, the snow you got to push it over and push it down between uh, Pierce Hall and Crocs. It's the only place you can go with it. There's no other place right. to go with snow. So most of that's on Frock's land because they barely have enough room. There. No, it's all off where they push it, it. It's all on. I know the trees are on, on Frock's land, land, right? Land. What's that? The trees are on Frock's land. Correct. And the, uh, if and you the look back where of they that plow, building is, is really tight. Right. Too, right? It's that starting to matter, right? Because otherwise you're going to try pushing it through. So yeah, just from removing, picking up and removing the snow is, is more stable. Pretty near, you got it. You got to plow it to the door for, for. Yeah, right. Then you'd almost have to plow that whole section in front of the. All the way to the church. Yeah, in front of the patch, pumpkin patch there. Well, you can't really leave it there. No, you can't. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, we've been um, um, talking with the road crew about um, taking care of some of the piles in, in the village. So. It, Definitely. And it, Thank talk you. About that. And it has been raised that uh, John is willing to help out. So yeah. So we'll Great. just Thank get you. that on yep. right But but yep. it's a, it's not going to be a high priority job. But the library certainly would be a, something that they do. Great. Thank you. Do so you think it's going to snow still? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> if we if we plan for it, then maybe. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well let's plan for it then. Okay. <laughs> I think that's. Do you have anything else, Tony? No, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your work on the board. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Everybody's good in Zoom. Right. Um, so the next <laughs> item on the agenda is the highway mileage report for, for this year. Here. And where is this from, Dune? Where did it come from? Um, this is this is every year we have to um, submit this to the state. Just the um, okay. The um, how much how um, many miles of how many miles of which type of road we have. It also has something to do with the funding that we get. Yes. Right, right. It's part of the funding, you know, the support from the state. So as of in this report in the class one roads. Um, we have zero mileage because um, Route be 100 and, and Route 73 are state responsibilities, they're not ours. Class 2 roads, we've got 12.24 uh, miles. Class 3 roads, we've got 30, 38.67 miles. And well, the <coughs> state highway is 17.135 miles. So. And we have 6.85 miles of um, legal trails and 7.96 miles of class four road. So I'd move to approve and, and sign this, get this back to the state so we're in Good. compliance. Second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> and also the town clerk, you've got to sign that too, right? Yeah, I don't think there's much else. Just looking at that, I don't think there's anything else you have to do that you have to sign. Yeah. Okay. All right, now we have, um, speaking of roads, we have a discussion about the, um, there's been a request for clarification of the legal trail between Jerusalem and South Hollow roads. There is a um, party that's interested in purchasing um, spot there and that that 
legal trail and travels right through the property there. Um, they're looking at purchasing and their question is whether they can improve that legal trail to utilize it as access to a possible home site, their possible driveway. Mm -hmm. And I, um, the little bit of research that I've been doing, I, I think that it is totally, um, totally acceptable and that's one of the reasons that we hold on to these class four roads and legal trails for um, future options, be it um, residential or recreational. I, I have a reservations. I don't know how the landowners that this affects have, have any say on this. You know, I mean, I understand the, the issue of want, the guy wanting to come in that way. Um, he certainly has two other access points on his property that he could utilize, but they're not very uh, environmentally friendly, I guess, is the way to I To what, what other, I know well, it he, meets on Route 100 down on the, the, on the, the class bottom. four road hits on his property on Jerusalem too, is, is looking at the map. Mm -hmm in the office the other day and I was seeing that it was tight but that still is, is a pretty monstrous hill you'd have to climb to get up there but yeah I but think how this does, question was that once whether it was from Jerusalem or from the top um, that they would have permission to improve that to to keep the driveway <coughs> moving you know so to use right. it as a access to drive and uh, I would think that I, I don't know he did not specify a housing site like whether it would be right on that road I would think not I would think probably it would utilize the legal trail and then then cut then in, cut somewhere, in right. somewhere on that would, yeah. uh, that also splits another property too right is that correct how do you mean there's another property in between him and there is there another uh, section map of right land? there that comes up through there. It's a very odd shaped lot. Well, who owns the green and before him? Um, from above? Well, between Larry Strauss's and... Oh, from South Owl? And, and uh, yeah, from South Owl Lane. Is that... I think it goes right to Larry's, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it, I'm pretty sure... Is that all, Larry's. this is all Larry's land in between there? Well, it doesn't. Um, yeah, it doesn't have the other. It doesn't have the other plot lines, lines yeah. but I'm I'm pretty sure that Larry's, Larry's is the last. Oh, Larry's. That's, we've got Larry. He's Larry's on there. Yeah, yeah Larry's got his hand up there. Yeah. Back the mountain. Yeah, road. yeah. I I got the see, but this is where Joseph so Hill goes right. The Santas owns the piece. Right. Oh. The Santas. The oh. Santas own. That, that's what I thought. Pasquale okay. owned it between you and there, but I wasn't sure. Uh, we, you know, the so, problem, go ahead, Larry. Yeah, it, is there anyone on the meeting tonight re representing the, the purchaser? Nope. I don't think so. Anybody on Zoom, maybe? Doesn't look like it, Larry. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, I, I I, I kind of echo a little bit. I mean, first of all, um, you know, I, I certainly would love to see a single house on 700 acres. You know, I mean, that seems like a pretty good neighbor to me. Um, but um, I mean, Frank does raise an in, in, interesting question of, you know, is that the, I mean, is, you know, is, is that the right use for a, a legal trail? Um, I mean, I just were, uh, it I might refer you to the town plan, um, which, which says in, you know, section, uh, under transportation, um, class four roads and trails, section B trails are used exclusively for recreational purposes and are not intended for vehicle access. Therefore they are not maintained. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not presenting that to, to you know, because I'm opposed to this. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, but there are, con there are things to think about. Um, and I, I it, it also was unclear 
to me from their map whether their property actually abuts uh, the class three or class four road on the Jerusalem end. Um, and certainly the lot is not landlocked. They, they do front route 100. Um, so it might not be their choice access, but I don't know that the town is obligated to give them a convenient access. My my and other thought on this, Larry, was simply uh, if if we viewed this as a driveway, then we're putting ourselves in a box here by limiting DeSantis. If DeSantis comes out and wants to join in on this, let's say um, down the road or whatever, then we, you know, we we'd be better off if we created it coming that way to be a road, not just a driveway well it would but still be a, add to, a, a add legal to the, trail if, right if he improves it to be used as a driveway uh, right. it still is a town legal right. trail it, it still would be a yeah. trail but yeah. my concern would be you know future down the road for development or whatever because the Sanus has a very large chunk there too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my concern is he's he would be the landowner that would benefit the most by making an upgrade to that trail. As he yeah, did. so, so I, I mean, so, you I, know, there's, I mean, it just depends on, I mean, the, I think the current request is just to allow improvement and, um, and allow him to travel along uh, the legal trail and branch off to a true driveway somewhere. Um, right. We don't know where. Right. Um, and uh, not to reclassify the legal trail in any sense. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the problem is, you know, what is the purpose of a legal trail designation? I mean, legal trails are defined in statute as legal trails are not highways that that's what the mm -hmm. that's what the vermont statute says um so um you know it it it's it, it you know and then there's a second part to his question is what about su further subdivision of his property right that that becomes even more legally nuanced um whether he can then, you know, and I'm not an attorney, and these are real technical legal questions, you know, and, and, and it really then jumps into the planning board's court. Um, you know, can you uh, call the legal trail frontage on uh, road. as a road? Oh, right for more than one lot. I mean, the big lot has frontage on Route 100. That's clear. Um, but if you subdivide, can you call frontage on the legal trail road frontage for a second lot? Right. I mean, I'm not pretending to know the answer. No. Well, the, the theory behind that, Larry, is you just deed yourself a 30-foot right away. Whether you use it or not is not apparent if you know so, it doesn't matter pat you had a comment need, need yourself a right away to what you're to, to you're still you, not fronting on a highway right it doesn't have to legal it. trails are not highways right but you, if you deed a 30 foot right away regardless you have you well, have the right you mean to all that. the way down to route 100 yeah he could do that yeah i, mean, I don't i guess they they could yeah. do that you know i mean you don't have to use it if you have a, an access yeah to your property, but you, in order to split it off, you could grant a use of a driveway off any road, yes. as long as they had a 30 foot right of way, whether they use it or not. Yeah, and, and not yeah, having- That's the, true, if, if, if the town is gonna to allow this to be their driveway, and that's the, the question. Right. Yeah, right. and not having the purchaser, prospective purchaser here, we don't know. I mean, they could split it and have one, entrance off of Route 100 
down there and then keep the uh, their driveway off the legal trail on the upper part. We don't know how they're planning on, on splitting that, if, if they are. Pat, you had something yeah, you want to say? Yeah, the subdivision is a conversation down the road. It's not the conversation that should be on this table right now. Right. He would be entitled well, to... Well, he that. asked both, que he asked he both questions. Yeah. The answer would be the subdivision is, is a whole different department, a whole different discussion. So... Um, he can, I believe he can do two dwellings on one parcel, so he could build not two houses. Not under the current, not under the current okay. zoning rules, he can't, um, no. But we have, we have a precedence in place, not to even bring up Pine Gap, but to, um, Brad Leathers, uh, took a trail, improved it to make a driveway access to his house, mm -hmm. and it continues to be a trail, and it continues to be used for recreational purposes. Um, more recently, Jim Bean on um, Tunnel Brook improved the access to his house and um, he now drives up to his house and that was a trail. No, and it's only a three season. And this can't, it is cannot, still used. He's not supposed to plow in the winter. It is still used for recreational purposes. So we, hmm. we do have some precedences in place where we have done this for landowners in the past. So we do have to look back to what we have done and try to be fair and follow suit to what we have done for others. Um, well, just because it's been done doesn't make it legal. <laughs> well, I, I, these other parcels that we're talking about don't, don't have other access points either. I mean, uh, this lot is quite odd shaped and quite large. Um, and he does have access points in two places other than going off the trail, which would be... Yeah, but he's not going to access the top of that property off of Route 100. No, no. Without but a chairlift. If yeah. he wanted to split, <laughs> he wanted to split that off. He could yeah. do that. Yeah. You know could. what I'm saying? That, you know, yeah. He could split this yeah. land and still have access yeah. off this point off Jerusalem Road is what I'm getting at. I mean, if this lot was service, it, if, if this lot was landlocked and only accessible through this public right-of-way, there's absolutely no question that he would have a right of access. Absolutely. Right, and that's what I'm getting at. He has two other options there to yeah, me. I agree, um, with, I agree with that completely. Uh, if he didn't have any other option, I would look at it differently personally, but I... I don't know. I, I think we need to do some more research on this and go from there. I mean, quite frankly. Yeah. I think we need to ask some more questions about it. I mean, it's a little different request than what other people have asked in the past for this type of situation, I think. Perhaps he should go ahead with his subdivision and determine where his access is coming from. That way, he'd be clear right from the start. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to say, not knowing what the what the plan is there. Yeah. Dave, are you here on, on behalf of the planning board? Do you have any well, input? Mostly to listen to this here, but mm -hmm. I mean that one of our questions was similar to what Larry put forth: was you know what is a legal trail? You know, and I don't quote me on this, but I almost believe that in our our um, planning rules that it says about road frontage. Right. You know? So right. there's a requirement for road frontage, and I guess the question to me would be, and for us would be, what is the status of a legal trail? Yeah. What is it actually able yeah. to be used for, and what other than a legal trail? Can but it, it's or definitely can it not be called. specified that a, a public right of way is is not a highway. Um, you know, T nineteen number five hundred two, I think three hundred two, A five two, and um, but road frontage. We don't say highway frontage. We say road frontage. So this is where we get. We, we, you're right. We're going to need to. There are semantics. Dig, there. Yeah, there's the semantics. We're going to have to dig a little deeper and probably get more um, legal. But it, opinion on I honestly that. think that if he's got access to two other <clears throat> points, that that makes this 
this is a more convenient way to get to his property, mm -hmm. no question, coming in from the, That's why he's asking that from question. Southern, yeah. the yeah. southern uh, uh, lane there. But yeah. and coming, we, coming up from, I'm not sure that is... Uh, we have other parcels that will bring up a similar situation if yeah. and when they ever sell. Right. Um, well, that's, land, that's my Cushman question Ridge. was that, you know. Um, there's, we, this could come up again and again. We have some pretty large... Those are large, stands. large tracks. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. um, I believe this property is in land trust, and I'm not sure if that becomes uh, a factor I think in any that of it, right? This orange chunk is in the land trust. Okay, I'm and the sure other stuff about, is not? I'm not sure about that. No. Okay, I know it's all forest land. Yeah. Steep. All right, well, I suppose he was hoping that the select board would come with a, a specific declaration today about what he can do, but it sounds like we want to do more research. We promised research. discussion. Yeah, we promised <laughs> discussion. We're discussing. Yes. Um, I think we need to get clarification if he's got other yeah. access points, whether that has any weight for that or not. I don't know. Well, that and what the full definition, legal definition is of a legal trail and well that's pretty much right here and what and what constitutes road frontage road frontage right right all right so i guess we'll um we'll um we can table that for another time in, right dig into that a little deeper thank you larry for your input because this um you're you would be seeing traffic on that through through um your um your neck so for sure uh you know, luck, luck, luckily for, or unluckily, uh, if, if I were on the select board, I would have to recuse myself. But mm -hmm. tonight, I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> we'll all hang out. Well, like yeah. You are unrecused. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, thank you for your input. Uh, next on the agenda, we've got a discussion about the town meeting there's been some some evolution and in, in directives from the state giving the towns a little more um, flexibility about how to conduct the um, town meeting in light of the ongoing covid situation so last year we did we do it zoom yep. we yes did a zoom town meeting last year in Australian ballot. You're on mute, Nancy. An Australian, an Australian ballot. ballot. Nancy got something she wants to pitch in about? We did not have a town meeting last year. No, we had two informational meetings. Inform that's right. right, two informational meetings. And then and the then Australian ballot. ballot voting. Right. Correct. Yeah. We can do the same format. So you want to read what Julie has put out there? Okay, this, um, uh, the legislature has approved S-175, and this bill does three things. One, it empowers municipalities to change the date of their town meetings. Two, it empowers municipalities to vote by Australian ballot rather than from the floor, as we did last year. And three, allows the Secretary of State's office to waive certain statutory deadlines or provisions for towns voting by Australian ballot rather than from the floor on a case-by-case -case basis. To waive certain statutory deadlines by an, on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, I guess that's to be determined what exactly they're talking about there. <laughs> and then I think they're going to give us a little bit more clarification yeah, next um, week. Yeah, next week. Well, this week. And there is <laughs> this a, week. a second election-related bill starting in the Senate government operations this afternoon. I guess that, that was, was Friday. Friday afternoon. That would do two things. One, eliminate the need for nominating petitions for town meeting. It's unclear whether this would be for all Australian ballot meetings or only for those where a town has decided to move from floor voting to Australian ballot. And it would also eliminate the need to commingle ballots. What does that mean, commingle ballots? Because when you have um, a town that's split, or you have like school, the school district, right? Okay. School, okay. And then yeah. 
put them together. Um, the two, like Rochester and Stockbridge, we could commingle. We wouldn't have to commingle them. We could do our own vote. They mm -hmm. could do their they own do vote, their and vote. then we okay. put them together. Right. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go with the flow. <laughs> yeah. so. I, don't, I don't know. Uh, what do you girls have to feel about that, Julie? What's your Julie runs the elections. Mm -hmm. Julie runs the elections, yeah. Um, I think if we went Australian ballot, that would be probably wise at this time with the high rates of COVID mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for safety reasons. Um, it's just a matter of whether we want to change the date. If we give ourselves an extra month, we'd have four weeks to not be pressured with all of the deadlines. And how, but and that's a budget and finance, we, we have to finish with that tomorrow, and we'd have to set the tax rate by tomorrow afternoon, is that right? Well, it's not, it's, in order it's, to a, it's approving the budget. Approving right, the budget, approve yeah. the budget by, by tomorrow, and then, right. then we could go forward with that. So the other part of this is that, depending on whether the second part of legislation is approved, we won't know if we need to petition for any of the elected positions. So when you petition, that means you're going to need signatures, and that all has to be in by the 18th. Yeah, January. We don't even have a meeting until 17th. It's the January it's, 24th. If we stick with the if we stick with the uh, February 28th town Eight. meeting day then the, the consent forms for all officers who are running have to be in by the 17th with 10, 10 signatures each. So there's just, there's a lot of pressure with all the deadlines, meetings. Uh, I mean, we're looking at for the town report, we have to deliver to the, the, the we have to deliver the town report by the 20th at the latest. 10 days from today. Hmm? No matter what way we go, right? right. Well, no, not, if we, if we do, postpone it just gives us a little more breathing but it just depends I mean we can do it it's just gonna be put we're gonna what are the repercussions um, to moving it uh, a month later is there what uh, what are the unintended consequences that would happen there not the only thing is if if the if it's voted down it'll still give us a 30-day uh, warning to go back out so that we could even jump in with voting with the school on May 3rd and we could do all of it that day because we're going to have to do another vote that day anyway. So should we consider that to begin with? Well then we wouldn't have our 30 days if it was voted down and it'd be into June. You wouldn't no. want that. Well no it would. It would uh, if we if we stick if we move the date to the 28th of March 28th. That'll still give us our 30-day warning. Right. No, I was referring to moving it to the same as the school vote. Yeah. Oh. Too far. That's pushing it. Too far. <laughs> I mean, it's... We if we know it's... One if we knew day. it was going to go... <laughs> um, I mean, excuse me, can I ask a quick know. question? Sure, Marsha. Um, Julie, uh, Julie, you're saying um, that February 28th would be town meeting, but I thought it was always the first Monday in March, which would be the 7th. Well, so our first Monday will be the 28th of February. So the first, oh. the town meeting is generally the first Tuesday of March, which is going to be March 1st this year. Oh, okay. Excuse me. I'm sorry. So, so um, if you didn't change it, the town meeting voting or whatever would take place on Tuesday, the 1st of March. No, no we ours are always the night before. Yeah, ours are always Monday night. We yeah. always have ours no, the night before town meeting day. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's right. I'm sorry. I was remembering from last year. Pardon me. But if we win Australian ballot, don't we have to have the ballot open for the whole day on Tuesday? Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. It so be, yeah. It so be regardless, we, we'd be looking at Tuesday the first if we win Australian mm -hmm. ballot mm -hmm. as being our voting day. That's if, what we did last year. I remember we went, was the. If we win Australian, we, went we did ours on Monday because we had to do the school vote on Tuesday. Last we had year, two days in a row. yeah, we had to vote had, two, days had the two days in a row. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Yeah, we had, that yeah, <laughs> we ended up with the school vote here at the office, but because we, we sent everything with us Monday to the school to vote with this uh, 
for the town meeting day oh, for the Australian ballot. Oh, that's right. And we had a box out there for yep. early school voting too, yep. didn't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So the uh, right. I guess the real one of the questions here is, are we going to hold on to having an in-person town meeting? Maybe if we put it off a month, or do we want to go with the multiple informational meetings in Australian ballot, which is probably the the will be a result in the least amount of gathering of people together. Nancy's had her hand up a oh, couple Nancy. times. Yes. Yeah. I think it might not be a bad idea to wait at least for another day until you know more about what the legislature has done and what the Secretary of State is going to do. That's true. We do have a meeting tomorrow night um, on the budget to pass the budget, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way we know our options. It's not going to make any difference. It gives every one of you more opportunity to think about it. Can can do, can we enjoy the luxury of going to our next regular select board meeting with a decision? It's going to be too late. Uh, no. That'd be too late. That would be no, too late. We, no, the, we can't. We wouldn't be able to make a decision tomorrow. It's not warned. Um, no, it is. We have a special yeah, select board meeting warned. To, do, to, to set, set the, the town meeting? Set the budget. To set the budget. No, but not to set the town meeting date. No. What no. if we make that an emergency meeting? That doesn't require a warning. Yeah. Right. I don't think we'll know too much until yeah, the governor signs it. <laughs> they don't go back in the legislation until tomorrow. So we, right. and I'm, I'm sure they're going to discuss it, but whether it's got to go through all the signing. And, and, and whether it comes out tomorrow or not. You know, it gives you an opportunity to think more about it. Can can we wait a week on that and have an emergency meeting on that, Nancy? Would that I'm give us sure. time for everything else? That would be, still be okay. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we should do that to see what sugars off on this. So that would fall under the criteria for an emergency meeting. For a special, have it, a special meeting. Just have a quick meeting on like that. Next the next week or something. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that, guys? Yep. And so we next know what month. all our options are when they yeah. finally finalize their decisions. Because I, I wouldn't um, count on having a clear answer by tomorrow evening by mm -hmm. no, just entering the either. legislature tomorrow. No. So, so what if we just table this until um, we find out more about what the legislature is going to wind up doing, and then? When Julie finds that out, she can let us know when we can hammer out a meeting mm -hmm. and go from there. Right. What do you think of that? Is that's that good, fair yeah. with everyone? Yeah, I do think yeah. that's, that's the right thing to do. Would that be next week? I'm wondering what I should say for the paper that Ask you probably the legislature. will. Ask right. the legislature. Yeah. Well, no, I mean that you're going to. I'm yeah. just going to say that you're going to wait to hear what the legislature decides to do, and yeah. then you and would plan to have a special meeting that's the following week. No, if we make or a decision tonight can. and then they change the criteria in a few right. days, we'd have to meet again to change it. So. Bar to heart. If we postpone the select board meeting, do we still have to make a decision tomorrow night on the budget? It, it, um, <laughs> it wouldn't hurt to, to take care of that. that. It would be nice to, to put that behind us. But um, if, if we move the town meeting date, we would give us all more time, give us more time. to do that. Yeah. Um, and for the Budget and Finance Committee to, to come to conclusions on what they want to do or what they're working on. I, yeah. are, do you I would, feel confident going forward, Barb, that you're going to have answers tomorrow? I, I think it's a question also for Julie and, and Christian, but I, I don't see any problem with having a meeting uh, and discussing what we know and what we don't know, and then deciding whether or not we have enough information to make a call tomorrow, but recognizing that perhaps it may not be done tomorrow night, if it didn't have to be. You follow me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That seductive procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must have worded. I must have worded it as vaguely as I could. <laughs> well, we do I understand. Was, I've been watching the news. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do have the. Um, 
and I throw whatever it is. We, we're, not, we're not not doing anything on it. No, um, yeah. we we do have the the option right now to decide to postpone the meeting a month, right? Yeah. And we would still that would give us more time to one see what the 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 um, COVID situation is evolving and, and we could still, um, that gives us more time to make the decision about whether or not we want to do it just with informational meetings in Australian ballot. Does it need to be published in the town report? Yes. So oh, we won't go, we won't go to print in the town report until we have a, we have a date. Yeah. We know what we're doing. We have a date. Right. 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 We need a date. The chicken or the what egg. What if we um, let this ride for the till next week when we do have the uh, the legislature's final stuff, and then we make a decision next week when we have a special meeting for that? And maybe right. would that give us time enough, Nancy, to do everything that we would need to do? Yes. <clears throat> All right. And just to put a little bug in your ear, um, there's a question being asked from the Zoom room. If you postpone the meeting, does that mean that the deadline for the petitions may move forward? That's going to be on a case by case basis. When you, I, I would have to call the Secretary of State, and it's, it's, yeah, something that and, they're. And that's still under legislative consideration. Right. So, so we don't know. So we don't know. Okay. You all set with that, Jeanette? Ever ask the question? <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're gonna um, we're gonna um, table this, and um, we're still meeting tomorrow with the budget and finance committee and see if we can't finalize the budget, which is something we need to do regardless whether it happens tomorrow <laughs> or at the next special right. meeting in a week, and we'll have more information hopefully when we can make a final decision on that. So, all right. Barb to heart Scott. Barb. Yeah. Uh, while we're at it, speaking about tomorrow, some of the things on the agenda could still include things that you pretty much have talked about, whether like your financing for the truck and some other 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 areas besides just the uh, question of the fund balance and matching grants. There are things on the agenda uh, that could be on the agenda that could be resolved tomorrow, I'm sure. But maybe not the whole thing. I'll yeah. take my hand down. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> It just gives us another opportunity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. I am also meeting with Larry Strauss tomorrow. We're going to, uh, we've got more guidance from the ARPA funds. Oh, yeah. Um, they've been defined and redefined and cooked and baked and they're coming out of the oven. We're not quite sure if it's done yet, but we're going to meet and with what they've given us and, and, and we may be able to have some input in to the budget I was wondering about that what we could be doing with the funding in that particular mm -hmm. budget year okay okay that would be good yeah good to know some of some of the uh, projects I don't I, I don't I don't want to scoop Patty but just I, I would just add to that is that all of the careful thought that all of us have put into it uh, oh, oh, through the summer and fall and all the uh, seminars and webinars and is it essentially last Thursday got thrown out the window <laughs> as the <laughs> Treasury Department adopted the final final rule um, and it's actually a big win for the town and the nation really um, they tremendously uh, liberalized and broadened and simplified all of the spending rules. Um, so pro and procrastination pays sometimes, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, yeah and, and, and VLCT just sort of sent a big email <laughs> of like, stop the presses, you know, <laughs> just to, um, if you're doing anything, stop. Um, wow. You know, uh, to, wow. sorry, sorry, just oh, never mind. No, so um, a anyway, um, yeah. So oh, it's all good audience. news, yeah, good really. News. But it's it, it's an entirely changed uh, her horizon, um, and going to be m much easier oh. and um, 
Yeah, but Patty and I will talk about it tomorrow and we can share the details. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we'll move on to um, Joan. You still hanging out in Zoom land? She is still here. All right. You're on mute, Joan. <laughs> Uh, okay. Now you're good. There. Okay. Uh, I really, whoops, you turn on a light so you can see me. <laughs> I like your hat. Thanks. It's cold up here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really don't have a lot to report. I, as you know, been um, providing information as needed to the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, I'm still working on FEMA reimbursements. And I'm now working on the bid package generator. Um, those are the three things on my site at the moment. But what's the third thing you've said? Working on the bid package for the generator. Okay. Um, and providing information to FEMA and then working on the bid package. Yeah. Okay. Working on the reimbursement from FEMA. Why wouldn't it be nice uh -huh. if uh, FEMA took a hint from the, the ARPA money and simplified everything? <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little too late for us. Yeah. Okay, and providing the, the uh, bid package for what was this thing? I'm sorry. Uh, 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 preparing uh, the bid package for the generator, the backup. Thank you. I'm sorry. All right, well, carry on then. Barb has okay. a comment. Barb's got a comment. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, Joan, is this new information that you're giving to uh, FEMA? No. Okay. New stuff <laughs> that I've been doing for the past. Yeah. Well, weeks. Okay. I mean, this, so the numbers aren't going to change that much, or will they change? Which are your <laughs> That's a. I can't answer that yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, Barb. Which is another good. <laughs> Try to pin me down. Can't do it. <laughs> well, I can be vague. You can be vague. <laughs> yeah, I'm vague. <laughs> Call me vague. <laughs> That's a good reason why maybe a little more time would help us all out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Might, no actually have, might actually have an answer by the time you're ready. <laughs> that was yes. No, it's, just, it's a tough. It's a tough. It's a tough road you're following. I, I understand that completely. So. Okay. I'm not alone on it. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Um, don't have anyone here on the highway front that probably out standing or sleeping. Um, <laughs> Terry, you got anything on the utilities front? No. No. Thanks for coming out. Oh, you're just enjoying the heat. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> <attending>. <laughs> um, Do we have um, Jeff Gephardt here as the energy coordinator? We want to. I am here. Not a lot to report. We've got an energy committee meeting coming up on Thursday, and we will have uh, Vermont Council on Rural Development, John Copens and uh, Alyssa uh, Johnson there. Uh, we'll be reviewing the uh, Rochester Area Climate Initiative uh, mm -hmm. ranked um, priorities. I did have a conversation via email today with Greenmont Power following up on the resiliency zone or island. And they tell me that Norwich Technologies proposal was selected by GMP with the solar generation sited at North Hall Farm. I believe that that means that uh, it's in the gravel pit uh, North Hall mm -hmm. Farm has. And uh, GMP is meeting with Norwich Technologies on the 18th, and they will provide us with additional details after that time. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Okay, well, that's that's news. Oh, uh, you know, also many, some of you were involved with uh, GMPs coming down to take a look at the uh, uh, facilities in town that might work for electric uh, vehicle charging. Mm -hmm. And uh, the follow up with them is they're basically wait, you know, they're looking for our town to identify a parcel that would work and then they would be ready to move. Mm. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, we don't have anything listed under the old business, um, so it brings us to public comments. Is there anyone that's got something they want to speak about tonight? Nick Romano. Yeah, I do, uh, Dune. Yes, Nick. Yep. Um, so this is uh, a report for uh, 
emergency management. I got a uh, message from Tori Littlefield uh, uh, letting us know that there's a new uh, state level requirement of all towns regarding emergency management. I'll just read a little bit of it to you. Uh, according to statute section 1220 VSA paragraph six, the emergency management division will establish regional emergency management committees, which shall coordinate emergency planning and preparedness activities to improve their region's ability to prepare for respond to and recover from all disasters. Uh, this will require, um, each town, uh, designating two people to this regional, their respective regional committee, uh, one of which is the uh, existing emergency management director, myself. And then a second person needs to be appointed by the select board, uh, which should be a representative from the local emergency services community. Um, so Terry and I discussed it and agreed that he would seek someone from the fire department to be that second person and to be recommended to the select board, uh, which needs to be done by the end of January. So. Um, uh, so I, I, there's still the room there, but you might be able to speak to it as well. So, uh, on the next select board meeting on the 24th, I have a conflict with the word of a board meeting, so I cannot be here, but I, so I just wanted to come tonight to alert you to that and let Terry, uh, bring the recommendation forward that he feels is appropriate. Right. Dr. Rain, Kevin, I think I'm just going to be the one that does it. Yeah. So we just accept him as Terry as being the. Want to punch you right now? We can. Yeah, might as well. Might as well. Well, <laughs> well. I would uh, nominate Terry Severy to be the second person to be part of the um, representative of the town of Rochester to the Regional Emergency Management Committee. I second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Terry. Congratulations. Um, excuse me, Vic is already on. He doesn't need to be appointed. Is that it? Excuse me. Correct. Thank you. Yes. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, any, anyone else that um, wants to speak about anything tonight? Uh, I'll just say I had just completely forgotten how much fun it can be to be at a select board meeting hey, and how, time, how much I so badly, badly miss it. Oh, is that a, a oh, request no. to be nominated? You looking for a job? No, 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 not really. You think he's being sarcastic? <laughs> Very sarcastic. My goodness. If we keep coming by Zoom. Yeah, it's um it, it Zoom actually makes things a little bit easier, especially on a night like tonight. Yeah. You know? No hands up in Zoom room. All right. Well okay. thank you all for um for coming and we have our homework and we'll meet again. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right. Okay. Thank you. Good night all. Thank you. 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 Thank